Okay guys, it's B. Riley here, and uh, today we are going to do something stupid. We're going to take a bunch of sandpaper, some scouring pads, and we are going to completely reinvent this 1968 Repro Stratocaster. <laughs> I built and finished uh, about a year ago and then took it off to my friend who is uh, magic with fretwork and had him sort out the mech and had him make it play. Now this thing plays fantastically. The only problem is, is that I'm not much for the color. The color was kind of a placeholder at the time. We were in the middle of the pandemic and the supplier that supplies my nitrocellulose paint was really, really low. I had Sherwood Green on the shelf, so I used Sherwood Green. However, now that I've got it back and I'm playing it, I'm getting comfortable with it and I want to go the whole nine yards. I want to completely dismantle this guitar. I want to uh, darken up the neck. It is an all nitro neck, but I'm actually going to go ahead and scuff it and start shooting it today, which you guys will see. And then I'm going to start dismantling the body, stripping everything down. There's a couple things that I definitely want to modify right off the bat. This bridge has way too many sharp pieces. This edge right here needs to be knocked off. These uh, pole piece adjustments for the saddles, all need to be removed one by one and then ground down at the base in a conical way so that they sit more flush because I don't want to catch my hand on this and cut myself. And uh, we're going to just soften the shine on these tuners. Uh, they are nickel plated uh, and they're already starting to age pretty fast, but I want to just kind of give them a kick in the right direction. The thing we're going to do is we are actually going to try something different, which is these knobs uh, to relic them. Nope, not gonna do that. Nope, gonna leave those alone, I don't care. We are going to essentially give this guitar the look of a closet classic, a guitar that's been played well, but cared for even better uh, in a high smoke environment. Because don't forget, 60s. I mean, so it's time to take this thing that's an eight and make it a 10. Sound good? Okay, here we go.
Okay, so we've got everything taken apart and we've got the neck all by its lonesome. The nut's been removed, um, the tuners are out, the ferrules are all out. We've basically had the neck down to all the things that you can have off of it before you start taking apart bits of wood. If you had a neck with a bunch of impressions on it, uh, where on the back side, um, you might have a, a valley or a rut or a scratch, uh, then you would want to sand those smooth um, because they're going to show up in the finish after you shoot it. Especially because the way that we're going to shoot this finish is, so our objective is to have as minimal amount of orange peel as possible. Um, if we don't want to go poly glass where it literally looks like water uh, that is without wind on it. Um, but we do want to get all the texture out of it as is possible. We want to make sure that it's as pleasant to the hand as it is um, to here. Anyway, let's get to that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up this heel because we did have some paint transfer from uh, the clear coat and everything like that. This guitar was put together fast, so the paint might have been a little too soft when we put it back together. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up this heel, get a nice, flat, clean surface. Um, and then we are going to rub down the rest of this neck. Now, the cool thing about nitro is, is that when it is finished and when you do have the texture knocked out of it, you'll have a good glassy surface you can see in the reflection right there but when you actually get really up close to it and you lay it flat and you look across you will see kind of the ebb and flow of the grain through the wood and the reason is is because nitro is not a particularly good uh, substance it's not very good at staying intact it's constantly under uh, a cure it's constantly curing this is why nitro turns yellows and all that, uh, yellow and all that sort of jazz why it checks because it's still in flux and it's expanding and contracting. So here's what we're going to be using today. Going to be using Gracie's Vintage Finishes. This is Dark Neck Amber ending in 108. I've actually got two cans of these. This one's just about dead though. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and start off with this. I'm gonna put the link for this in the description below. Uh, this is a very excellent finish and I will tell you more about this a little bit later. But this is great stuff. When I actually tape off a neck, what I do is I leave the uh, side markers exposed, uh, especially if I'm tinting a neck because I don't want the side markers to uh, stick out against the contrast of the dark nitro finish. So at this point, we're good to go. Uh, we're gonna start off spraying it on its back so that I can flip it onto a contact surface that is taped off so that it won't leave impressions. And then we're gonna let this kick overnight. But I gotta shoot this really fast because the sun's going down. And even though it's Southern California, if it does get cold enough, the flash times really start to stretch out and you don't just get that, that really nicely even thing. Sorry about the plane. What are you going to do? It's a plane. I can't stop it. Okay, here we go. This is our result after we've actually shot the lacquer onto the neck. We have a really good contrast here uh, in the depth of it, but you can see from the reflection that we do have a texture there. It's pretty subtle when you're actually really staring across the surface. If you look there, there it is right there. And that's why it's so important that we're gonna have to wet sand. Anyway, we are ready to start sanding this thing. You may notice that there's actually a bit of clouding along this bottom edge. <clears throat> That's my fault. Decided to shoot it last night when it was getting cold out. Left it in the garage overnight to go ahead and kick off. Luckily enough, <clears throat> when you see nitro and you see hazing along that top edge there, what that is is just a moisture displacement that takes place when you are shooting uh, paint that is still a little warm in the can onto a surface that isn't as warm. Luckily enough, 
this is right up top and is going to come out immediately once we start to sand. Now, if when you're shooting, you do start to see a lot of that, uh, you want to wait. It means you're shooting too fast in between your coats and you're getting that temp displacement, that uh, gassing off is getting trapped in the top layer. Okay, so here we go. We've got the neck all finished and we've been wet sanding and polishing. So uh, at this point, the sheen's pretty good, but uh, we do have a really good uh, texture to it. And uh, if you actually look right here, this is where we start to get to the fun stuff. Um, finishing is okay. Uh, this is where things become fun. If I turn the neck this way and you direct your attention to the reflective nature of the back of the neck, you're gonna start to see the wear patterns come in. So when you have these and they are just sitting next to the finish, you typically will have, you know, not any great big difference. Uh, you're not gonna see any uh, great, you know, reveal there. So what you have to do is you have to expose the grain. So on this, there's a bit of a trick that I use for this, because here's the thing, if it's a 50 year old neck, it's not gonna be perfect. Uh, so we actually, now that we've got this all shiny, we need to actually dull it. And now that we have this exposed wood, we need to highlight it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. When you are tinting a neck, when you have um, dry spots that you're looking to highlight, because if this guitar were 50 years old, the motion of the hand would actually wear through the finish. And at first it would wear through the bulk of the nitro, which is where you have the actual lightning. And then the cool part about this is the depth that you can get because if you look right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight where the wood has become prevalent and where it hasn't. And the cool thing about this is there's no way to go wrong. Now, we're going to use the dark walnut and the reason we're gonna use this is because the grain is passing us by. We're only gonna get that front surface to really have absorption. Now, that means that we have to go a little bit darker on this. Pop this disgusting thing open and Go, set that aside. Uh, just be warned with this. This stuff is messier than hell. Tissue paper, roll it up in like this, and then you're just gonna fold it in half over your middle finger. Fold it in half again, and that's gonna give you a good tight ball of tissue paper. So you got a good dab there, not too much. And you're just gonna tap over the exposed wood area and allow this stuff to get in there. Give it a couple minutes. Don't wipe it all off right away. If you look just above it, you can actually already start to see the pores of the wood soaking it up. So you just keep wiping it in there. Let that sink in. Make sure you haven't missed any spots. This is the type of wear that you will typically see on fenders from the 60s and 70s where the thumb is reaching over because you've got to remember that you're not trying to carbon copy everything that you're seeing on the racks of the vintage shops. Instead, what we're trying to do is we're trying to replicate your actual playing. Now my playing, uh, typically I do not keep my thumb back here. Instead, what I do is I wrap my thumb up and over to create an octave and omit a fifth. And you can actually reapply too into those spots because those spots are going to get dark. If you look at guitars from the 50s and 60s, typically speaking, speaking, when you have exposed grain like that, they get very dark very, very quickly. So you wanna make sure that you're not missing any spots. Back to the clean one. And come down here. There we go, that's better. All right, now we've got a nice light wear pattern that is consistent with a guitar that's been cared for but has definitely been played. And there's no texture to it. You can barely feel it with your hands. So if you're worried about it gripping or feeling weird, 
and don't sweat it. It's still gonna look a little weird because the rest of the neck looks almost brand new, but I'm gonna show you guys how to sort that out right quick. But before we do that, there's actually another thing that we want to do, which is if this guitar were around 50 years ago, it would have check marks. I've seen people do checking, false checking with a razor blade or with a knife. I've done it myself, and I'm gonna be honest with you, it is not convincing. The check is way too deep, and too commonly people don't understand that checking is radiating around an area that is open to atmospheric uh, temperatures and or humidity, i.e. bolt holes, stress areas in the wood. If you've got a string tree, that's where your checking is gonna be. It might be coming across and past as the wood expands and contracts and the nitro starts to crack, infinitesimally small cracks all throughout the face. However, all of them will eventually start to become influenced by breaks in the finish. In this case, we're actually gonna use a scotch bright. What we wanna do is we wanna create infinitesimally small scratches in the surface because we're not gonna be able to get dirt to stick to this. There are sections on this where there are a couple of very light swirl marks and you can kind of see them in the reflection uh, if you're staring at it. But once again, we're not going for perfect here. Uh, we're just going for interesting, something that looks good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with this. I'm gonna scuff up this surface and then I'm gonna show you guys uh, this neat trick that I have uh, to age the finish. Now, uh, unfortunately we don't have bare uh, porous wood on the front, so we cannot tint that way. We need to use a method of tinting that sits over the finish, sticks to the finish, and will stay there even with soap and water and even with a bit of polish. Now you can always polish it back out if you wanna just go ahead and go with the standard look, but this is a neat trick that I learned a few years ago in the automotive communi uh, community uh, to age something. Okay, so we are coming down the home stretch on our refinished and or relic neck. Uh, there is one important step that you may have noticed that I left out. Real sorry about that. Went back to edit it and realized I left out an entire step. So this particular step, which is checking the neck and creating those superficial cracks that form up on the headstock or on the back of the neck, uh, for this you are going to need one very expensive piece of equipment. Uh, luckily enough, I think you got it. The big expensive piece of equipment. Okay, 
so we've had some time pass. Let's have a look at what we got. Okay, you guys, so that's the whole process for this, and that's going to be the end of episode one. So uh, for the next episode, we're actually going to start working on the body. We're going to scuff it, and we're going to do something kind of cool. It's a new type of finish, which I've started to see come out of Fender Custom Shop a little bit more recently. It is a nitro finish. It is a relic finish that we're going to do so that it matches our uh, new neck. But at the same time, it does have a unique turn on it, and it's a particular type of refinish that has started to become more prevalent lately as Fender starts to openly admit that sometimes they cut corners. And one of these uh, corners that they cut resulted in some of the most interesting finishes that you'll see in the 1960s coming out of Fender. So that's that. We've got the neck all good to go. You guys hopefully are pleased with the results you got. Remember that each step is kind of a, not a one size fits all. You can take it as far or as not far as you like, depending on what type of results you are particularly looking for. Don't forget to throw any questions in the comment section. Stay tuned for part two of this series where we get into the body of the Strat. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys dug the video. Have a beautiful weekend and do enjoy getting lost in your work. I'll see you around. I'm B. Riley and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Hey you guys, B. Riley here, and today I am going to take a bunch of sandpaper and some scouring pads, and I'm going to beat the shit out of this thing. <laughs> damn, damn it.